Ye Wu Bing's 100 Lessons to Mastering Time Management. Lesson 50 Convert Chores to Actions with the Three Question Method. Hello, everyone. My name is Ye Wu Bing from Yishoneng. I am so happy to be with you now at 6 a.m. on the Shimalaya app. For those of you who have been following my lessons, welcome back. And if you're new here, welcome aboard. I am so happy to have you with us. Time is man's scarcest resource. Once it's used, it can never be regained, so if you're not using your time effectively, or if the time you are spending is only getting you further away from your dreams in life, then stay with me. Listen a while, and I'm confident I can help open your eyes to a new path that will get you closer to your dreams. I want to remind you, there are 100 classes in this album, and every class lasts about 6 minutes. It is updated at 6am New York City time each morning. In the previous lecture, I talked about Three questions connecting ideas and actions. Every day there is much we must do, and in our minds, many ideas form. If we cannot use a good system outside the brain to manage our own ideas, then a lot of things will be forgotten, because our minds cannot remember things well. And as you know, when things are not completed and are allowed to remain in our brains, we will become anxious. We call these ideas that are in the brain chores. You must learn how to empty the brain, that is, to put all the chores into a storage system outside the brain. Learn to remove these ideas and to do items from your brain and move them to either software or paper. If you can learn to do this, you can conduct a more clear assessment of these ideas and then transform the important and meaningful of these ideas into a specific next step or action. It does not matter whether you use our recommended software OmniFocus to empty the brain, or use your own familiar and favorite recording software such as a memo or a pen and paper or a notebook. The key is to convert these passive ideas into actionable tasks no matter which method you try. In the previous lesson, I talked about how setting up a medical appointment with a doctor is a task that we may easily forget to do. When we forget it, it can cause anxiety as it festers in our mind as something that needs to be done but isn't yet completed. When we temporarily forget and then suddenly think of it at a later date, often we are not in a place or situation that allows us to solve the problem immediately. We must plan the appropriate time to set the appointment and then wait weeks or months before the appointment date. All of this is extremely inefficient. So, with a chore, like setting up and completing a medical exam, it is only when we note it down that we can comfortably continue on to other tasks without the burden of that lingering task causing anxiety and concern in our minds. Then, later when we are free, we can open our inboxes, which are the lists of the many tasks we have documented, evaluate and prioritize and transform these things into bulk, into our next actions. Look at each of the chores you have recorded and ask yourself three questions. Should I do this task or not? What is the result I want to achieve? And what is my next step? For example, transform the get physical exam from a doctor into I need to call the doctor's office to schedule the appointment. After emptying the inbox, transform each chore into the action phrase we discussed in our last quest, that is the I plus verb plus key person plus thing. I plus verb plus key person plus thing. Once we transformed all of our chores, we will have a list of clear, concrete, and specific actions that can be completed. The I plus verb plus key person plus thing formula contains a verb. Verbs, as you know, are action words, and actions can easily and specifically be carried out. Now that we have defined the chore as an action, we can then combine similar actions together and complete them in bulk. This is how you increase efficiency and maximize your productivity while minimizing time spent. For example, making a phone call, processing tasks on the computer, processing tasks at home, going out to complete tasks, and trusting others by delegation. These are all situations where similar actions can be done at the same time. We call these contexts or situations. So contexts are situations where groups of similar actions can be done together and actions are the action equivalents of passive 
and unproductive ideas. Do you see how it all fits together? Each situation or context will have its own list. We call these contextual or situational lists. They both mean the same thing. When we set a clear date for each task on the situation list, we can move it or schedule further providing clarity and order to our tasks. So, to put things and ideas from mind to action, we first have to transfer them to the recording system outside the brain, into specialized software or simple pen and paper, whichever is more convenient for you. The situational list and the schedule are two very important but distinct and separate tools. The situation list is flexible while the schedule is specific. We need to ask ourselves three questions if we want to transform our minds and chores into the next action and separate them into either the proper situation list or to a scheduled date. They are 1. Should I do this task or not? 2. What is the result I want to achieve? 3. What is my next step? You need to ask these uh, three questions for each and every task. At first, you may feel these questions are particularly difficult, annoying, or just uncomfortable, especially because you have so many things to do. It will take time for you to properly screen all of your tasks through these three questions. There is no shortcut. Therefore, you need to set aside time specifically for the task of brainstorming and organizing your tasks in this way. Once you've completed this exercise, and your chore inboxes are emptied and converted into actions and transferred into situation lists and scheduled dates, then it will become much easier the next time you do it. The next list of chores will be smaller, and your mind will be less encumbered with the weight of those other tasks. Therefore, it will be easier for you. The regular use of Yishuaneng's system can help you regain full control of your own work and lives. New habits are difficult to learn in the beginning. In our offline classes, I will help you quickly learn and master this ability. Once you master this critical ability, you will see how brilliant it is. These audio lessons are translated by Yishan Ang's partner, Cece, and then recorded by her husband, Justin. I wish you great success today. See you tomorrow.